Hey guys, uh, this is Eric from uh, Injective Protocol. Really glad to spend the time with you guys and talk about uh, attack vectors for oracles and the security of oracles, uh, especially when, with regards to derivatives. So obviously, Injective Labs, during the phase of social assessment, we process a lot of transaction. And we've seen you know, more than 10,000 trades per day and also like uh, a billion dollar in notional value. So basically we had a lot of learnings in terms of how important are oracles to these derivative markets. And the short answer is uh, the security of the oracle equals to the derivative market. Um, basically during a course of SOSIS and later on Equinox testnet, we noticed a lot of delays and a lot of very micro factors that could contribute a lot to the overall security and scalability of the, uh, of the derivative markets. <clears throat> So let's talk about the impact of oracles. Obviously, the oracle failure, um, especially for any type of DeFi projects, lending protocols, derivative, is extremely detrimental. We've seen it in both the traditional finance um, and also in centralized crypto uh, exchanges, and more importantly, in DeFi. Synthetic had a Korean won issue that created a billion dollar in uh, potential profit. Compound had an incident that caused a massive liquidation of 85 million. And BitMEX has caused multiple uh, manipulable uh, price feeds and also uh, Oracle issues that has caused uh, 4 million uh, historically. Now, BitMEX's case is actually very interesting because it was a centralized Oracle on a centralized exchange, but due to the selection of the source price, it actually created a lot of issues that went kind of uh, unanticipated by the traditional traders. So when we look at oracles, we generally um, evaluate them based on three factors. Number one is the quality of price feed. Number two is the sec uh, security of the oracle. And number three is the reliability of it. So obviously in terms of the quality of price feed, it's extremely important for any type of uh, derivative uh, market. Um, first of all, you want to make sure uh, there's low, uh, low delay or no delay. There should be minimum delay between the collection and aggregation of the source price feed to on-chain enforcement. As you know, that Ethereum has a 15 second block time and a lot of Oracle price fees follow that standard and try to feed price based on uh, the intervals or um, the multiples of 15 seconds. And oftentimes we see a lot of Oracle solutions. We would have a one minute delay in terms of on-chain enforcement or on-chain submission uh, from the aggregation and generation of price feed. So let's say in a perpetual swap market, um, if you want to have a sufficiently high leverage uh, for any type of market, you generally want to enforce a three minute TWAP to prevent any type of crazy uh, market swings during that three minute window. But since the Oracle aggregation and collection and uh, submission uh, takes around one minute, um, that creates a very weird uh, and strange market dynamic because you are effectively um, delaying the execution and settlement of the uh, contracts. And that also means that the contract price due to the lack of liquidation is implicitly delayed by one minute. And on-chain price obviously fails to capture 25% uh, of the price data within this scenario. We can go into a more concrete example. And this is one of the edge cases that often happen within DeFi. And this is what we generally call a clawback. Um, a million dollar position is set to be liquidated at 100 and the bankruptcy price is uh, $90. So generally we would assume that this is uh, a 10X leverage position. A three minute TWAP is currently sitting at around 99.5. But during that one minute, let's say there's a black swan event happened and the underlying market crashes to $80 in the one minute window. So when the price feed is posted on chain, the uh, million dollar position is liquidated. Um, well, at least uh, supposed to be liquidated, but the current market is already trading at $80. And after the next TWA window, when it's posted on chain, um, the position will be liquidated at a price lower than $80. And this means that um, no one can I liquidate his position without posting a loss to the insurance fund or to the balance sheet uh, of anyone trying to liquidate. Another very interesting thing that um, people often overlook is the liquidity. The price fee should accurately represent the global liquidity to a reasonable extent. So that means if you're uh, posting the price feed on Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum, one of the more liquid markets, you should have maximum market coverage rather than focus or aggregate it from a select few exchange. Um, if the underlying price source only represents a very small fraction, uh, fraction of the global liquidity, it can basically bottleneck the market growth. So that means that the growth of the derivative market uh, will be tied to the growth of the underlying to make sure that the security is still in parity. So uh, given an example, let's say um, uh, injective grows at an um, astronomical speed and processes a uh, billion dollar in over in, uh, interest and you know, $200 million in daily volume. Um, the underlying market, however, only processes $10 million in daily volume on the spot market with, uh, let's say, um, 
$10 million in book presence or $20 million in book presence. Then a bad actor can actually very easily financial, uh, financially manipulate uh, the underlying market, basically creating a misreported price feed and uh, affect the entire uh, overall futures markets, which we have seen a lot on the BitMEX uh, uh, incidents. But we have seen uh, within a centralized exchange space, at least, uh, this has been uh, quickly uh, uh, improved upon and uh, fixed. Another very important aspect of the price view quality is aggregation. Uh, the price data should be aggregated over a TWAP uh, with a very, very fine grained calculation for a wide range of uh, uh, at least timestamps. Because the lack of aggregation, for example, creating a fixed window of sampling uh, within one, uh, let's say this Oracle is uh, creating a three minute uh, update and it samples exactly at a three minute uh, mark uh, uh, every time then the legal traders can uh, basically manipulate the price of the underlying and making a large market move at that split second uh, at the time of sample and create unfair uh, liquidations. So this is actually very much of a bare minimum requirement for a lot of Oracle price feeds. Security of the Oracle is definitely a very interesting and vague and um, hard to parameterize concept because more importantly, it's very hard for you to see and feel the security of an Oracle. Um, but we can have a few heuristics when it comes to evaluating these and can, uh, kind of give you like a comfort of mind whenever you want to pick an Oracle solution. Number one is a stake bonded. Uh, for example, if an Oracle has a significant stake, it, uh, that is essentially a honeypot for the hackers to try to take over the funds uh, uh, bonded to that Oracle. This, this obviously creates an incentive and creates uh, a requirement for people to secure that Oracle network um, uh, as much as possible so that that honeypot isn't being exploited. Uh, number two is value secured. Um, how much is the uh, Oracle is securing based on the notional value of its uh, uh, greater financial market? So that means if the Oracle is providing price fee for um, you know, a lending protocol that uh, has over $10 billion TBL or derivative markets that have you know, $10 billion in open interest, that means that this, uh, this Oracle is likely, as, as of right now, very much secure because those who want to exploit it would have already tried uh, multiple times over and over again. And number three, most importantly, uh, that is the history and the track record of the Oracle solution. There's a lot of Oracle solutions out there. A lot of them might not necessarily have the best track record, but it's always good to see whether it, an Oracle solution has a very clean history uh, that's very secure and that hasn't had an, uh, a hack incident in the longest time. But obviously, uh, these parameters are bare minimum necessity and basically just a heuristic for people to decide uh, on a uh, blank blank piece of paper what Oracle solutions are going to what Oracle solution or not. Because uh, if in the case of security, we've seen multi-sig wallets losing more than $160 million in their second exploit. So obviously, this single incident has already broken these heuristics. Another really important thing about uh, Oracle is reliability. Obviously, when it's not hacked, uh, when it's secure, when the data quality is good, but if there's downtime, if there's a lot of issues, if there's misreported price feed, uh, this Oracle is as good as hacked oftentimes. So a lot of Oracle networks have uh, a history of experiencing frozen and non-functional due to faulty uh, contract upgrade. Um, and there's a lot of issues such as misreported price feed or uh, hanging price feed. And those are all the issues to be factored in when you want to select a Oracle solution. So in terms of overall, uh, on a high level, reliability can generally be determined in, uh, in the sense of a data quality, range of Oracle connections, reliance on randomness, which is actually a very interesting uh, um, factor to consider, development and network effects, uh, adoption metrics, resource uh, efficiency and network design, uh, especially when it comes to propagation and gossiping, uh, multi-chain support and decentralization. And multi-chain support is actually very much of a problem that's uh, uh, unique to Injective and a lot of uh, other projects building as a scaling solution or uh, a multi-chain deployment. Because if you ever want to explore the state on Ethereum, um, that would basically mean that you're getting a price feed or a quality that's, uh, that requires a confidence of multiple blocks being mined on top of it. So on top of the uh, uh, 15 seconds delay on Ethereum, um, you also have to face around five to 10 blocks. Uh, so that would mean around 
uh, uh, up to 150 seconds in terms of delay, which is obviously not acceptable. So this is why uh, chain length OCR is actually very exciting for injective. Uh, and that's because basically we can skip the entire step of uh, observing Ethereum launching event and directly getting a price feed from Chainlink um, and deploying to a multi-chain uh, uh, environment. So obviously what happens when oracles are being uh, are, are disqualified or fails, there's obviously uh, you know, the social and technical uh, standpoint of things. So in terms of the most standard and the most interesting uh, aspect, uh, it used to be a bread and butter of injective, which is for running prevention. But Oracle data providers can obviously abuse the advantage of uh, obtaining the data ahead of the rest of the system and basically make trades um, and uh, beat the, uh, beat the on-chain enforcement uh, and make a lot of profitable trades. Another issue with Oracles is that um, it, it, uh, some, some of the poorly designed ones could face a lot of civil attacks. And that means that basically ob uh, obtaining a majority of votes can allow someone to man man uh, manipulate the Oracle. And uh, that is only possible, obviously, when Oracle identity is uh, permissionless and anonymous. Another issue that we actually uh, do face a lot, but uh, it's not a problem that's being discussed a lot, which is uh, selection bias. Many DeFi projects will utilize uh, DEX price fees to serve as Oracle, which is obviously prone to being manipulated um, because again, uh, back to the very beginning, uh, in terms of price quality, we want to make sure that the Oracle or the price feed or price source reflects the global liquidity. Now, uh, if you only utilize DEX price feed uh, to serve as Oracles, this would mean that uh, basically you're not reflecting the global liquidity, which makes you uh, makes you being pr uh, prone to manipulation, um, you know, uh, oftentimes flash loan attacks and a lot of other things. And obviously, uh, Oracle at the end of the day is simply an aggregation and verification channel. Um, they might be pulling from exchange data. They might be pulling from exchange API. They might be pulling from uh, you know, tr traditional sources. So if the data was ever man manipulated on a source level, um, that might create another issue as well. And obviously, like we said before, there were manipulations um, and malfunctioning that's, uh, 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 that, that was caused by oracles and thereby creating this uh, 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 premature liquidations and a lot of uh, hanging price fee that uh, creates a lot of hack. Um, and synthetics has faced uh, similar issues during the earlier days. So looking forward, what's missing within the oracle space? So first of all, there's absence of rule and, uh, rule and uh, framework. So that means that basically for any type of Oracle, for any type of project trying to select an Oracle, you don't really know what to look for and what's, uh, what's deemed as secure and whether there's a standard for evaluating a security parameter um, and the quality of price feed. Oftentimes, especially for a, new, uh, a lot of new DeFi products, they just go by the Uniswap price feed, which might not necessarily be the best for the use case. There's also lack of standardization on time delay invariance. Uh, this means that basically uh, Oracle, especially when it comes to any type of um, derivative markets, uh, lending market, and stuff like that, uh, the time delay is extremely key because you want to make sure that the on-chain uh, enforcement is as close to real-time market as possible. However, since the lack of standardization, this also creates a lot of issues in terms of uh, liquidation and um, uh, settlement. Another issue is, uh, is the dilemma between transparency and exploitation. So first of all, um, Oracle wants to be as transparent as possible uh, when it comes to their uh, design and also uh, security. However, by exposing their design and security and the way they source the price feed, it also invites a lot of exploitation. Um, a, a good example would be that, let's say if an exchange does not disclose how they get their uh, price source from. While this is extremely untransparent and that's uh, heavily discouraged within the crypto space, there's also no way for people to manipulate this price feed uh, if there were absolutely no evidence of uh, the price source. However, on the other hand, if an exchange is very transparent with uh, where they source the price from, the weighting of it, um, and also the overall collection period, then it kind of creates uh, an incentive for people to look for any type of window to exploit this uh, since uh, due to the timelessness of this design of Oracle. And last but not least, the decentralized governance of Oracles. Oftentimes we do see Oracles are somewhat uh, centralized and permissioned, but we do want to see uh, over time in, uh, uh, evolution towards a full decentralized governance for any type of Oracle solution. Thank you so much. Um, 
uh, th this is kind of like the overview of uh, what we learned about uh, Oracle, especially for derivatives. And Injective is launching its uh, Canary network right now. And hopefully we'll see you once we go canonical. All right. Thank you so much, Eric.